Yo, what's up? The guys over at Cymatics were kind enough to send me their newest pack, Infinity, and I'll be using some of the sounds in it in my track. If you want to try it out, there's a link in the description. It is free to download. Today, let's make a drum and bass track. Drum and bass, also written as drum and bass or D&B, is a genre of electronic music characterized by its speedy drum samples and powerful synth basses. It's a style of music that became pretty popular in the UK rave scene throughout the 90s, but the roots of drum and bass started a couple of years earlier in a genre called jungle. Jungle started in the UK nightclub and outdoor event scene in the late 80s. It took drum breaks from funk and jazz songs and fused them with dark, moody bass lines and vocal samples from dub, dancehall, and reggae songs. The overall style was really dark, aggressive, and rebellious, reflecting a lot of the youth culture at the time. However, during the mid-90s, more producers started straying away from the reggae influences of Jungle and started making more stripped-down, bass-heavy songs. To differentiate itself from Jungle, it was simply called Drum and Bass. Since then, drum and bass was instrumental in the creation of many other UK-based genres like UK Garage, Grime, and Dubstep, and some of the offshoots of the genre include liquid drum and bass, drumstep, and breakcore. Lately, there's been a resurgence of drum and bass styled songs stemming from the breakcore community, and I absolutely love their aesthetic. They're taking the wild and choppy nature of breakcore drum rhythms and fusing it with lo-fi and ambient sounds, almost made with the intention of being beats to relax, study, or chill to. You can tell that this new take of drum and bass or breakcore reflect the gloomy and moody vibe of the current youth culture, a representation of this generation's emotional climate, almost a complete 180 from the aggressive sound that defined the genre's inception. One of the most fundamental parts of drum and bass songs is, of course, the drums, often using breakbeats. A breakbeat is a section of a song where a band stops playing except for the drummer, letting the drummer play a solo. This was super popular in soul and funk songs back in the 70s, and it made it very easy for DJs and producers now to sample. One of the most popular breakbeats of all time is from the song Amen Brother by the Winstons, also known as the Amen Break. I'm sure you've heard the sample in tons of songs, but it was also pivotal in the creation of many drum and bass songs. For my track, I had an idea of what to do with the sample, I just beatboxed what I had in my head to make the sound that I wanted. As a producer, I think beatboxing is very helpful in making what you hear in your head come to life. You don't even need to be good at it, you just need to get your point across. It's all about getting the drums in the same rhythm that you're beatboxing. It does take a little bit of time to cut and rearrange, but with a little persistence, anyone can do it. I ended up making two patterns, and I'm going to use them for different parts of the song. I did add some effects, one EQ to cut some of the lows, and an automated EQ to cut the highs at different parts of the song. Here's what that sounds like. Along with the sample, I also played a kick and snare just to give it some more oomph. They simply follow the kick and snare that the Amen break is playing. Another thing that I did here that I almost never do in any of my other songs is that I adjusted the master pitch of the track. It doesn't change the pitch of any of the samples I'm using, but it detuned the drums and the bass that I'm going to add. To go along with this cool drum loop I made, I wanted to add a bass line that emphasizes the drums. Something deep, dark, and powerful. And historically speaking, an important bass line in drum and bass is the Reese bass. Known for its unique, warm, and wobbly texture, the Reese bass was created by Detroit producer Kevin Saunderson, also known as Reese, using it on his techno track Just Want Another Dance back in 1988. That bass line found its way into drum and bass after Ray Keith sampled it in 1994. And since then, countless other artists have interpolated and expanded on the sound, including Dodge and Fusky and Noisia. The coolest characteristic of this bass is that it sounds like it's constantly changing and shifting, and that moving quality comes from the amount of detune added to to the synths, making it wobble faster at higher pitches and slower at lower pitches. For my track, I kept it pretty simple. It's just three saw waves with some fine detune in the middle. It's pretty harsh right now, so let's add a couple effects to fill it out some more. I used an EQ to cut some of the highs, some distortion and sound geyser to beef up the sound, bit crush with destructor, and some chorus with super VHS. I made three patterns for the bass, just for different parts of the song. I 
I'm alternating between pattern 1 and pattern 2, and then I go back to pattern 1 and then finally pattern 3. 1, 2, 1, 3. Sounds like a Tekken combo. So the drums are done, the bass is done, what is left in drum and bass? Atmosphere. Because the drums and basses are usually front and center in a drum and bass song, the melodies can be pretty atmospheric. The sounds are just gonna linger in the background, be very spacious with a lot of reverb. Luckily, Cymatics' new Infinity sample pack is full of vocal chops, acapellas, and spacious vocal one-shots, perfect for EDM, hip-hop, and R&B. Of course, if you want to try it out, there is a free download on the Cymatics website, I'll have it linked in the description. I actually made a separate project just to make this loop. I took this vocal loop, got it in time with the project, and just started layering. I also had to switch all of the samples to the key of C, so it's just easier to manipulate later. Once I finished, I exported it and put it into my main project. I added a limiter for peak reduction, a small bandpass EQ, reverb, and an even bigger reverb with Supermassive. I also consolidated that sound and then pitched it a whole octave down and then used that for later parts of the track. What is the theme here? Underwater? Everything else I added was just ambience, like this ambient loop, these reverse effects, and some pretty cool repeating vocal one-shots. Real talk. Drum and bass holds a special place in my heart. My introduction in drum and bass happened when I was about 12 years old. I was listening to a few mixtape CDs my dad got from his friend. One of them was a record from Exploding Plastics, and the other one was a mega mix from Diesel Boy. And it was just so different from everything I've ever heard, and I just loved every second of it. The only thing my child brain could really compare it to was some of the video game soundtracks I heard while playing my PS2. I didn't even realize it then, but drum and bass influenced my early production. When I was making dubstep, I wanted to sound like Noisia and Koan sound, not even knowing that drum and bass influenced them. And just knowing the history and having the knowledge of it all just makes everything come around full circle to me. I understand I'm not from the UK and I'm kind of like an outsider looking into it all, so I'm sure I'm bound to get some things wrong, but for me, drum and bass has always been a genre I could look at with fond memories.